Welcome to Painting Arts and Crafts. This is the second video in a series of glass painting. And the first one we showed you how to frost the glass. In this one, we're gonna show you how to paint something on top of the, the glass itself. We're gonna go right on top of the frost. We have not baked it yet. And what I thought I'd do is uh, show you how you can, without being an artist, create something absolutely beautiful, right? So I wanna do a sand dollar. What I've done is I've just printed out and cut uh, three different sand dollar sizes so that I can show you how you can put something behind the glass and use it to trace. So you don't have to be an artist to be able to do this. And I just did three different sizes because the first thing I want to know is like, what size do I want my sand dollar to be? I think that's too small. Let's see about this one. I like this one better. Next size up, uh, I actually like that the best. So that's the one we'll go with. To do the painting itself, we need a couple of things. We need, um, I prefer a number six round for something this size. Uh, I wouldn't go any bigger, that's for sure. To do some of the lines and uh, details, I'm going to use a zero round. And this is a double zero. It's uh, a nice sharp point. So between those three, I should have everything I need. I've got some water. I've got some paper towels. I need to tape my sand dollar, a little bit of masking tape, just to keep it in place so that while I'm painting, it doesn't move around. And I'll explain how with glass, you have to be careful because the glass is curved, but I'll show you how to get around the fact that the glass is curved. That curvature in the glass is going to mess with your ability to trace anything behind the glass. So we have to really talk about that. And then paint wise, I really just need white, black, and I'm gonna go over it at the end with some pearl. And then I will always clear coat everything that I make uh, before I do a, fi a fire on it with just the clear. It gives it uh, some extra coverage. Glass paint, if it's not put on very thick, doesn't have a lot of adherence to the glass itself. The minute it gets into a dishwasher or uh, after a few washes, it's going to start to come back off. So putting this on uh, really gives it that extra layer. That goes on last. From a black and white standpoint, it's gonna be mostly white, but I wanted some gray and I don't have any gray at the moment. So I'll just make my own. And they have like regular white, they have wicker white, they have titanium white, it doesn't matter. Honestly, it's not for something like this. It's, it's not that much. When I'm looking at the glass itself, it's curved. So anything that I put behind the glass, if I move the glass when I'm trying to trace it, is going to change the shape of the final object. So the, the trick here is to simply find a spot that's comfortable to you to be able to at least get uh, the outlines of what you need painted on here done. You don't want to start on one side and then flip it around to make it more comfortable. Not when you're doing the transfer. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of white. And because all I'm doing is uh, tracing an outline, I do not need a lot of paint. If you could see that. And I need to be really still when I do this. And it's a little awkward because I'm trying to make sure you can see what I'm doing in the camera, but I will do my best. When I'm doing painting on glass, I like an opaque look for some things. And this is going to be one of those things. And to get that nice opaque look, I'm going to have to do two coats. So this first coat is really just applying color so that I know what I'm, I'm gonna be doing on that final coat. And that's where I'll be uh, a little more particular about how it looks. So if you're thinking to yourself, hey, this doesn't look so good. Don't worry about it. 
This is the, the messy part. This is the we don't care too much about how it looks at this point because it's just the first coat and it creates a canvas for us to create a second coat where we make everything look as good as we possibly can. And something I want you to notice is where you have the frost, it's created grip. So it's basically giving you a canvas to work on. But where you don't have the frost already painted on there, that's the first coat of paint that you're putting on to that glass. So, so anywhere where it's just the glass, it's going to look very see-through because it's that first coat. Which is why I say, you know, if you want an opaque look, you want it to look solid, you're going to have to put at least two coats of paint in order to do that. And because it's a sand dollar, I'm, I'm totally happy with texture, which is what you're seeing from the brush strokes. I'm not trying to make it super smooth. I would prefer it have some texture. And you'll see why when we get towards the last steps how that's going to help. So this is just a little spray bottle and I can keep everything nice and wet and it'll keep the paints from drying out while I'm doing anything that I need to do. And if you need to walk away or you have to wait for it to dry at some point, you can absolutely do that. So tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the black and a lot of the white and then I'm going to mix it up if it's not dark enough I can always add more if it's too dark I have to add a lot more white to lighten it up to do this all I'm going to do is push and pull and then I'm going to come back from the other side and I'm going to push and pull so I'm going to push it into the corner with a little drop and I'm going to pull it back and then what I've done is I've created almost a channel. It's raised up a little above the other white and I've got like almost a channel. And that's going to grab any accent paints that I end up throwing there. Same thing with this. I'm going to push and pull. And then I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to push and pull. In the center, it's a little bit of a fat to thin flower type shape. So I'm gonna follow that. I'm gonna start and push on the fat end and pull it. And as I pull it towards the thinner end, I'm simply going to lift the paintbrush up so that it, it does the exact same thing. So I've got a little bit of a glob, not a massive amount, but I have a little bit of a glob on the top of the brush. So I'm going to push, I feel like I don't have enough. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab a bigger blob of paint. I'm going to push it down and then I'm going to push and then gently pull up. And in doing so, I pretty much got the shape that I need. And that second coat of white is where I'll get rid of any place that doesn't have any paint. So again, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to push it down a little bit, nudge it into the corner. And then I'm going to, as I pull it back, I'm going to lift up on the pressure. And try to match the other line that I did as much as I can. Now we have to do the two round spots. Is that too big? And it's not bad. I think I'm going to like that better. These are little tools that make dots and, and things like that. One, two. Okay. Let's 
first layer is just about done. I'm going to add a little bit of white in a couple of places where I don't have any paint. And then I'm going to let it dry. And when it dries, I will come back and do that second coat. Probably about 15, 20 minutes. I might hit it with the blow dryer just to speed it up for me. You don't have to do that. That's just an option. If you do use a blow dryer, do not put it right on top of the glass. It will cause the paint to bubble. And then you will have ruined your project and you will have to start all over again. And we don't want that. Now that it's dry, we're going to do a second coat. And when I say it's dry, it's not 100% dry, but it's dry enough for me to do a second coat. I'm going with a slightly wider brush. This is the zero as this was the double zero. This is a zero. And that's because of the size of this. It's if it was bigger, I could go with a bigger brush, but it's not, so I won't. Paint's a little bit damp because I'd sprayed it fairly well with the water, and that's fine. It'll all dry. Well, now that I've got grip, I can go back and forth. I can smooth everything out. I can fix anything that I don't like. Because the paint's got something to hold on to. So I want you to see how, how the difference between a single coat and how uh, it looks terrible. But once you get to the second coat, it becomes solid color and it starts to look a lot better. There are many different styles of painting and different techniques. This is just one. I'm not going to tell you it's the best one. I'm going to tell you it's just a painting technique and you can try it if you like it keep using it if you're not crazy about it keep looking for another technique that works out better for you creativity is about enjoying the journey and hopefully ending up with something that you look at and go wow i didn't think i could do that but i did then i'm going to step back and i'm look and remove this because I don't need it, haven't needed it for a while. Like that. And take a look at what I've done so far. This is the double zero paintbrush, which is going to allow me to make the details that I need to make. Now, I don't need a second layer everywhere, but I need to fix some of these curves. So I'm not doing a push and pull. I'm just basically going back where I was, but straightening it out or, or making an adjustment. The final step is going to be taking a little bit of the gray and, and kind of going around the edge to make it look a tiny bit three-dimensional. And then after that, I'll be adding the pearl to give it some shimmer. I'm not going to be pushing down. I'm kind of dabbing on here. Just a little bit of paint. I'm giving a suggestion of, I guess, a shadow or an edge. So it's a very small amount of paint on the tip of this brush. It's, it's really, it's not exactly a dry brush, but it's pretty close to dry. And I'm letting the brushes stay wide open. Meaning I'm not I'm not pushing and turning this into a uh, a group like like this one. Everything's all bunched together. It's I'm trying to get tiny little dots that I can use to make a suggestion. I'm letting the texture grab some of the paint. If I do too much, I can go back and just get it wet real quick and kind of take it back off. These pearl paints are uh, very elastic. So when I go to squeeze them out onto a tray, 
they tend to string and and make a mess anyways it's just a little bit easier for what I'm about to do As you can see I already had another string with this to be able to just open the lid up and grab a little bit of paint when I hit this with the dryer again I make sure it's pretty dry then just a tiny bit of the pearl not too much Let's see how creepy this is and I'll show you kind of what it looks like when you pearlize it. So I'm putting the pearl on everything. I'm not putting it on just one thing. It's going over the gray and it's going over the white. I'm hoping the camera picks this up and you could see that I did pearl here and here. This has not got pearl yet, nor is this. So as I turn this, I'm hoping you can see the shimmer that it provides. Totally optional. You don't have to do shimmer unless you want to. I like to do the shimmer because depending on where the glass is sitting on the table or the counter and the person that's using it, the shimmer gives it a little bit of depth I think it makes it look a little nicer. Once there's liquid inside of a cup, you know, any, it doesn't matter if it's a, a soup mug like this, right, which is like a cappuccino type mug, or if it's a, a wine glass, depending on what's going in it, whatever you painted, you're going to see less of. So from a design standpoint, I try to think about if it's a gift, the person I'm giving it to, are they going to use this for coffee, which is going to, you know, give it a dark background? Are they going to use it for cappuccino where there's a lot of milk and it's almost a, a, a chocolatey covered background? Are they using it for tea or soup? Uh, because that might change whether I do opaque or translucent. And we will touch base on translucent um, paints in the next section. Basically, I'm done with this, other than clear coating at the end. And I have a sand dollar, and it's going to look good. It's going to have some reflection from a distance across the table, or if it's sitting uh, on a shelf of some sort. I'm hoping this helps you. Uh, if you want to go to the next step, I'm going to do the next video. We're going to keep going around the glass. The next thing we'll be adding uh, is going to be a starfish. And I'm going to show you how to use um, markers to do your outline, to draw your the item. Your, in this case, I'll be drawing it with a, a starfish uh, so that I could then go back with paint and be happy with what I've made less mistakes than if I try to just go straight with a brush and hope for the best. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll try to answer them as best I can. Mm -hmm.